Welcome to the Superfast Touch Designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to build these image instances that can be modulated using different geometries. For the geometry source, I'm using boxes or a grid to control the position of each image, and the images will be loaded from a folder. This tutorial focuses only on creating the instances. If you want to go further, for example, automate the aspect ratio of the images, or change their rotation, feel free to explore your own solutions or join my school community where, besides the courses, we also study YouTube project files. With that said, let's do a quick review of what we'll cover. Chapter 1, Overview. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at how this network is structured. This network has six sections, and I've tried to keep the control instancing and render areas organized so it's not confusing. The first section, control 1 and control 2, contains some logic I built with chop operators to drive the animation and transitions for these instances. The middle area is where I placed all the instancing. The first part, called grid instances, uses grid pops to create the positions for each image using the classic instancing technique. The second part, called images instances looper, uses two math operators that I'll explain in detail later to solve something important. Briefly, if there are 20 images in the folder but the point count is higher, say 200 points, I want to avoid the remaining 180 points showing nothing, repeating the last image 180 times or causing a render error. To handle this, I use the math operators plus a constant where I set the number of images in the folder. This logic lets us use the total image count and loop it as many times as needed to fill the total number of points in the geometry. In the third section, I create instances to draw lines from the center to each image. This logic isn't perfect, but it should also work for other geometries like spheres or pyramids. The last section render uses some geo components to build instances based on the operators from the previous sections. Finally, this base component called images contains a replicator that automatically pulls multiple images in a parametric way, meaning the images are fetched from a folder automatically according to rules we're going to define. Remember, the goal here is to teach you the basics of a new technique I've been experimenting with, and the ideal next step is for you to push it further by understanding how it works. All right, with that quick overview, let's jump into the actual tutorial. A quick pause. If we haven't met yet, I'm Okami Rufu, and my life's purpose is to create, inspire, and educate through my work as a creative technologist focused on touch designer. I'm jumping in just for a moment to let you know that I've built a growing community on school where you'll find beginner and intermediate courses, exclusive tutorials, and a library of downloadable project files, including special bundles you won't find anywhere else. But more than that, it's an active, thriving space. For example, in one of the exclusive tutorials I uploaded recently, there are already tons of people interacting, sharing project files, asking questions, and helping each other. It goes far beyond a traditional academic setting. I've put a lot of energy into making it practical, efficient, and fun. And the best part? This space is slowly integrating all the value I've already built on Patreon, all in one place for the same price. I truly hope to see you there, sharing knowledge, experimenting together, and asking the questions that help us all grow. I'll leave all the links in the description. Chapter two, network. All right, let's start with the control section, which is the simplest one to understand. First, create a noise and leave all the parameters at their default values for now. Then connect a math, and after that, add a hold. What we want here is to freeze a number for a few moments. Create an LFO in the second input of the hold. And finally, finish this mini network with a lag to smooth out the final values. Now go into the math and change the from range to go from minus one to one. And the to range from 10 to 20. These are the values we'll use later to control the grid size. Select the LFO and choose the pulse waveform type. You can leave the rest of the parameters as they are. Now duplicate this mini network three times. Each LFO will trigger the hold to freeze a new number every time it activates, so we need different frequency values for each one. Change the second LFO's frequency to five and the third one's to two. We'll also modify the math ranges because we're going to use the noise's final values to change the X, Y, and Z scale of the grid that we'll use for the instances. 
For the second math, use a range of 10 to 40, and for the last one, 5 to 15. Remember to test and adjust these values to what makes the most sense for your project. For now, these work fine for the tutorial. Now, let's create the second control, which we'll use to alternate between three grids later using a switch. Start by creating another LFO. Also set to pulse and use a frequency of five. Connect a count and set the minimum limit to zero and the maximum limit to two. This way, every time the LFO triggers, the counter will move sequentially between zero and two. Now add a hold and a lag, just like before. Duplicate this last LFO you made and change its frequency to two, then connect it to the second input of the hold. Perfect. Now that the control setup is complete, let's move on to the pop segment, which will generate the points where our images will be cloned. Start by creating a grid pop, leaving the number of columns, rows, and slices all set to five. Now remember those chops we made earlier? We can reference them directly in the scale X, Y, and Z parameters, just as I'm doing here. Next, duplicate the grid two more times. For the second grid, change its orientation by setting 90 degrees on the x-axis. And for the third grid, set 90 degrees on all axes. Now create a switch pop and make sure to enable blend between inputs. And set length mismatch to ignore and zero respectively. Leave the rest as is. Then reference the chop we built earlier inside the index parameter of the switch and connect all three grids directly into the switch. You'll now see a smooth transition between the grids. Next, create a noise. This step is optional, so I'll, I'll leave it turned off for now. And finally, add a null to keep everything organized, renaming it instances. Before building the rest of the instance logic, let's set up the render network for displaying the images. We'll handle the lines and other elements later. Start by creating a rectangle. And if you want, increase its uniform scale to two. Connect a math and in the math, select text, which stands for texture. This allows us to manipulate the UV map of the textures instead of the grid's points or normals. Set the parameter size to three, and on the Y axis, use the expression abs time dot seconds to animate the textures. You won't see the effect yet since we don't have any images or textures loaded, but you'll understand it later. Now right-click on the math and create a geo component. Then create a fong material and drag it inside the geo. Select it in the material parameter. Perfect. Now we'll use the grid to create clones or instances no, of this rectangle. Select the geo component Enable instances and drag the null instances we made earlier into the default instance OP. In Translate X, Y, and Z, select the P0, P1, and P2 positions respectively. You'll now see the animation and the smooth transitions between grids inside the geo. You can experiment by switching to other geometries, but keep in mind that this setup can be resource intensive, so avoid grids with too many points. Now comes the most interesting part, how to load images from a folder 
and apply them as textures to each instance. Start by creating a movie file in. Right-click on the network and select Collapse, selected to create a base. Double-click to enter it and rename the movie file in as Image 0. Next, create a folder net and select the folder containing your images. If you have other folders or files that aren't images, use a select dat to filter them out. Create a select, choose select rows by index. And in my case, I start from index two to skip the header and unwanted folders. This ensures only the images remain. Rename the select to table underscore filter. Now go back to the movie file in and use the following expression, op table filter, me dot digits and one. This expression lets us call each file listed in the table filter one by one. Here's what it does. First, we call the operator named table filter. Then by using me dot digits, we reference the row that matches the operator's index number. The one refers to the second column, which contains the image's file path. The first column only has the file names, not the full paths. Those are in column one. If you've set this up correctly, you should now see the first image from your folder appear in the movie file in. Once that works, move on to the next step. Create a replicator component. In the table data template, use table filter so the number of rows matches the number of replicas. Think of the replicator as a cloner for operators. In the operator prefix, use IMG, or any name you like. And in the master operator, drag in the movie file in. After a few seconds, you'll see multiple replicas of the movie file in, each loading a different image from the list. This works because the me.digits part uses the operator's final number. For example, IMG1 means row 1, IMG2, means row two, and so on. This is a clever way to create something like a for loop inside Touch Designer. Once you have that working, exit the base component and rename it images. Now we need to use another instancing option in the geo component. For this, we'll need an index value. The fastest way is to create a pop to date to get the indices of each point in our final geometry. Right-click on the null instances and create a pop to dat. Now, we have a list of point indices. Drag this data into the instance 2 texture index operator inside the geo component. Scroll to the bottom, find texture index operator, and assign the data there. Then, under texture index attribute, select index which corresponds to the first column in the data. Now we just need an expression to call the images from the base. Write the following, images slash IMG asterisk. Perfect. Now you should see all the images rendered as textures in the geo component. If you look closely, you'll notice a subtle animation in the textures Y axis caused by the math we animated earlier. This is optional, but you can use that same math to manipulate the textures in many creative ways. Now, in my folder, I don't have 125 images, which is the number of points in this grid. Remember, we used a five by five by five grid, giving us 125 points. The simplest solution is to have 125 images in your folder so that each point displays a unique one. However, I found an easier trick, looping in packs. For example, if we have 25 images, we can calculate how many times that set should repeat. So all 25 appear across the 125 points. In short, 25 images repeated five times fill the 125 slots. To do this, create a select that calls the null instances containing the geometry data. Then connect a math, followed by another math, and a constant with two channels.
Name the first channel total images. And the second pack loop. In the first channel, enter the number of images, in this case, 25. In the second, use the expression 1 divided by me dot par dot const zero value. This refers to the value in the first channel, 25. Now reference this calculated value in the first math. In input attribute scope, select point I, and in post operation, use fract A. Then rename the output with the name pre-index. In the second math, select the attribute we created called pre-index, and in multiply, reference the value of total images. Rename the output final index. With that done, create a new pop to add from the last math and confirm you now have a final index column with numbers between 0 and 1 that repeat every 25 entries. This looping pack system allows you to reference this data inside the geo component. Just replace the previous data with this one and select final index. Now all images loop correctly in packs. Finally, let's create the lines. Duplicate the select we made earlier, connect a math, and then a null named line instances. In the math, under post operation, select length A and rename the output len. Create a line pop setting all values to zero except for the z-axis of the first point, which should be one. Now create a geo component, add a line material, and link it to the geo. Choose any visible line color. To finish, reference the line instances, null, in the geo's default instance operator. In the scale parameters, use len for all three axes. Then, in the next page of the geo, enable rotate to vector. And for each vector, select P0, P1, and P2, as I'm doing here. Perfect. All that's left is to create a camera and a render to visualize everything. If you want to dive deeper into this project, you can find the full version on my Patreon. I hope you've successfully completed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments.